pretty great. But first, introductions, right? My name is Scott. Right. And my name is Adam. <laughs> and of course, that Raven is pretty cool. I agree with you on that. You know, this whole theater has been inspired by birds just like that over the past 20 years. Honestly, since Disney's Animal Kingdom has been open, there's been shows here featuring birds, right? Right. Up until 2020 happened. <laughs> and things have been a little weird. But we were happy to have some extra time with our birds, but we're so glad you're back because the favorite thing for Scott and I is this, when we get to share beautiful birds with all of you guys. Uh, like these two spoonbills right here, uh, the Troy and Abed. Oh yeah, these birds are incredible. And the neat thing is, those are two different species of spoonbills. The white one is actually an African spoonbill, pink one, a roseate spoonbill. Now you can probably guess why they get their name spoonbill, right? It's because of the way their beak is shaped. It's used to go into the mud, and that helps them find things like crustaceans to eat. And for the pink ones, the roseates, they get that coloration from those same crustaceans. Right, and they're thinking they have spoons on their face. What else do you want? I mean, talk about some cool adaptations. Right? Yeah, birds do have some wonderful adaptations. And look at all these birds that are out here. This is great. This next one is Miles. Miles is a trumpeter hornbill, and he kind of goes to show you that some birds are made for agile flying. Now, tennis just made for flying in general as he kind of comes down there for you guys. Yeah, we wanted to give you guys a 3D moment out there. <laughs> but we might have one of our animal behavior specialists come out and give us a hand with Tennant as he's out here. I call that a close encounter of the bird kind. Very true. He's right there in the aisle, Lisa. <laughs> Just looking for a little direction. This just kind of goes to show you that everything happens at the bird show. But it's okay because we do things on the fly, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. Okay, okay perfect. <laughs> Let's go back to Miles. Back to my forest. Yes, please. Okay. These birds are found in the forests of Africa. They're designed to be able to fly in and around trees. Pretty impressive. And it, it, it's cool to talk about it at all, but maybe we could show them what that looks like like we showed them the school goes. I like how. I'm thinking that maybe we could, uh, we don't have trees, so we'll create loops with okay. maybe two I'm people. Out, out, out there. Oh, of them. <laughs> can, can we? Yeah, let's go for it. Cool, okay. I need two people from the same party who want to make loops with their arms to see if Miles will fly right through. Okay, all the way in the back in the blue shirt and in the white shirt. Stand up and work together and create a hoop right there. And we'll see if Miles will fly right through that hoop to our friend Chris all the way in the back. Hi, Chris. All right, this looks great, guys. And I love the concept. Adam, let's see if Miles can show off that fancy flying skill right this direction to Chris in the back. What do you say, Miles? Look at that. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Charlie, with another family. Can we do it again? No. Anybody else want to give it a try? You can. Uh, I think um, we'll go up to the front this time in the blue shirts. You guys go ahead and stand up. Yeah, we'll have trees of different sizes. Do the same thing, the hoops towards each other. We'll see if Miles will fly all the way back from the back to the front. A couple less trees in the way this time, but it's a newer location. I love it. What do you say, Miles? You're going to have to dip down at the last second and fly back up. I think you're good for it. You're pretty amazing bird, to say the least. Look at that. No problem. Hey, how about another round of applause for all of our volunteers? That was awesome. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And these birds are great flyers for a variety of reasons. Number one, they need to be able to be great flyers so they can avoid predators, but they also have to catch their food, including flying insects. Right. And maybe we could show them what that looks like too, Scott. How are we going to do that? Uh, well, I, I made an intention to do that. It, it's really cool. I didn't talk to you about it. I forgot it, but can, can we please do it, please? Yeah, why not, buddy? Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I'm really excited about this. Okay, um, I'm going to put my mask on. I can stand far away from you, but I'm coming down here with you guys. I'm so excited about this. I can't believe you said yes. Are you guys ready? Okay, cool. I stand up and I made this right here. Anybody know what it is? A uh, rocket launcher? It's kind of like a rocket launcher. It's a grape launcher. And I need somebody who wants to help test it. Does anyone want to give a try right here in the black shirt? Come on down, man. Let's give them a round of applause for all the announcements today. Okay, so what you will do is Scott and I, we will count down from three, okay? And then when we get to one, on the grape launcher, right here on our launch pad, we have an X. Do you see the X? When we get to one, you're going to stomp on that X as hard as you can, okay? We're going to launch a grape into outer space. Are you ready? All right, I think we're ready. Let's count it down in three, two, one. Whoa! He got it! How about a round of applause for our volunteer? You nailed it, man! I can't believe that that worked. It, when I tested it, it didn't work at all. That was incredible, Adam. Thanks. So, you know, oh. you might actually have to try that more often. That's pretty great. Oh, for sure. We can launch more stuff? Oh, well, well, maybe. We'll talk about it. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> well, Miles, you did a great job out here today, too. Thanks for showing off for all our friends. There's going to be some more treats in the back for you. You just have to go through that same window you came out of. Do you remember straight through? Miles, our trumpet, or hornbill. 
So the really cool thing about hornbills is there's different species of hornbills out there, right? Uh, some that fly, some that walk more on the ground, right? Right. So we can bring another hornbill. Another hornbill. Oh, cool. We could do another hornbill. Another hoop. That's what I always say. All right, another hoop. This you guys want to see another? Sebastian. We're gonna need a, a bigger hoop. <laughs> well, Sebastian's a southern ground hornbill, and like his name suggests, he spends a lot of time on the ground. But these birds. They are fully capable of flight, which is a pretty amazing sight to see. A lot of people never get that opportunity to see a southern ground hornbill in flight. And it really goes to show you those white wing tips. They have beautiful white wing tips on the sides of those wings. Now look at this bird. Adaptations galore, but my favorite is that beak. It's used to go through the grasslands of Africa and pick out things like bugs out of the grass. Right, just like that. They basically find something they want to eat, pick it up like a pair of tweezers. But they'll even eat snakes, and not just any snake, they'll eat venomous snakes. They grab them with the beak, they shake them up, and they slurp them back. It's horrifyingly disgusting, but super cool. <laughs> and here he is at top speed. <laughs> Sebastian the ground hornbill. <laughs> Okay, Sebastian's pretty great, and when I think about adaptations in birds, what comes to the top of my mind would have to be the ones that come out at night, so that would be owls. You guys want to meet an owl? Yeah, I was hoping you'd say that. So think about this with owls. They have some great adaptations, right? They have some of the best hearing in the animal kingdom on... Chickens. Yeah. And an owl. <laughs> there are some things we don't want to share with all of you, but that's the whole predator prey thing. Let's leave it to Nat Geo. I'm gonna make sure those chickens get home safe, okay? Uh, I'll be right back. See you later, Adam. Okay. Well, owls are pretty incredible birds, to say the least. So we're gonna be meeting one of those owls right there. <laughs> this is a uh, Quetty. Quetty is a milky eagle owl, third largest type of owl in the world. And you know what's really neat? You saw how low he flies. He flies about eye level. Well, his next flight takes him all the way across the theater to the other end where Lucy's at. So, if you guys are in any of these lower sections, which is just about every, everybody that's here today, get those cameras out and ready to go. I think you're going to get some great footage of Quetty as he flies. What do you say, buddy? Whoa, and besides all those woes, you might have heard nothing else from Quetty at least as he's flying, right? And that's because he flies nearly silently, and that's an important adaptation to help him catch his food. See, they fly nearly silently so they can sit in a tree just like he is right now and act as an ambush predator, so if an animal comes across his path, he can pounce right on it. Just like that. Pretty incredible bird to say the least. Wonderful adaptations, including excellent eyesight, especially in reduced lighting situations. So by things like moonlight and starlight, these guys excel in the nighttime sky. Quetty, you are such a great flyer. We'll see you later, buddy. That was Quetty, our Milky Eagle Owl. <laughs> owl. No, 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 that's the tail end. <laughs> Did you at least tell them the amazing things about the Milky Eagle Owl? We talked a lot about owls, uh, but I forgot to mention the most important thing. It's the role they play in the environment. So, an owl the size of Quetty there, he can eat over a thousand mice or rats in a single year. That reminds me, there were like a thousand rats here not very long ago. That's like three months. <laughs> we had a lot of them here. There was a really bad outbreak for a while, right? Oh, it was bad. And I, I, I mean, I thought it was going to go on forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it happened for a while because rats tend to be pretty smart, so I think they know how to escape and get away uh, from people if they were to, like, walk on lights and stuff. Yeah, and they're really good at finding food, too. They have a great sense of smell. Yeah. You see well in the dark? Yeah, but owls came in, so the rats went away. Yeah, so I know you worry about the rat problem, but don't worry about it. It's behind us now. <laughs> But I think they were probably here so long because they're smart, you're right. Yeah, it's true. But there are also a lot of really smart birds, too. Okay, so who do you have in mind? Like, like primate intelligence level ravens. Like this guy here, like Dixon. Oh, uh, and you've been working a lot with Dixon, so maybe we can have you do that training session we were talking about earlier, and then we can talk about how these birds are learning in their environment, right? Sure. Okay, so you're going to notice Adam in his training session. He's probably going to be getting treats at different times for different behaviors. So what he's hoping to do is see what those behaviors, if he gives him a treat, he's going to learn Dixon. something. He just, why'd you give him a treat for untying my shoe? Because that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we were training Adam. Anyways, these birds are going to learn very quickly what causes them to get treats, right? So hopefully that they do something we like and... Hey, Scott, your shoe's untied. I see that. Weird. Weird. Okay, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. You're awesome. <laughs> Great. So, like I said, you guys can try the same type of training technique. It's called positive reinforcement. You can try it with your own animals at home. Just keep in mind, that okay. Adam, we said we were coming to the guy. Okay, I'm coming to the He's not going to go. No, he's going to go around the other way. He's going to get it. Here it comes. <laughs> nope. What is that? What? Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> 
Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, come, come on. This is Steve, right? He's... <laughs> you can just yell. Oh. Yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> they can hear you can hear him, right? Yeah. 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 You can just yell. I tell you what, there's probably backup wires in the back. I'll grab one, hook it up. No, no, but, um, hey, but no, 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 wait, 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 Scott, no, no, Scott, I've never been out here by myself. Um, hey, do you guys like magic? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, um, just for you guys. Okay, check this out, I've been working on this. So I got this peanut, right? Okay. That's all I got, so maybe we should just meet a parent instead. How about that? You wanna meet a parent? Okay, that's, that's a lot better. Okay, give me like one second, we usually just do this a little later. Um, hey, hey guys, um, hey, Lisa. Would you maybe come out with Molly and Gabby, but just like a little early? Yeah. Okay, uh, you're the best. Hopefully in just a minute, Lisa will join us, and she has these two amazing parents that she's been working with. Um, and they have the ability to mimic, which is really awesome, right? So mimicry is the ability for an animal to copy the sounds that they hear in their environment. And it's really, really awesome. And a bunch of different birds can do it, including things like ravens, like that guy on stage. But with parrots, it's really awesome because they start to mimic the sounds that they hear with their flock mates, and it kind of teaches them their own language. Just like the same way that we learn language, we copy those sounds as we learn them. These parrots are capable of the exact same thing, and it's a really cool way for them to communicate. Even two parrots of the same species might have a different dialect in what they learn. But these two parrots right here are incredible mimickers, and Lisa's been working with them for quite some time. So thank you so much for coming out, Lisa, and I'd love it if you could maybe show us what uh, you've been working on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Adam. Hi, everybody. These two adorable birds right here are Molly and Gabby. They're pretty and cool. Uh, can you say hello? Hello. Hello. That's nice. Can you say hello? Can you say hello? Hello. Yeah, well, you're saying hello. What about you? Your mic. Can you say hello? Oh, I don't know why this microphone. Let's try a different microphone. Hold on one second. It's on, but it's not working right now. This is not a Raven-related issue. <laughs> they do like to cause chaos. All right, let's see if this one works. All right, can you say hello? hello. There we go. Hi, Molly. Can you say hello? hello? There we go. Hi, ladies. Now, Molly and Gabby here. Like you said, they, birds like this can learn to mimic all sorts of different things. It's pretty incredible. Um, but they have lived in people's homes their entire lives. So, uh, what's your name? Gabriella. Gabriella. And you're Molly? Molly. Exactly. So they have picked up all sorts of really fun stuff. They have some pretty cool things you girls want to show off. Oh, what do you see up there? You hear that noise coming out of her mouth and then looking out to the side like that. They might see something they're a little unsure of. Um, certainly not typically prey items in the wild. So they might get quiet or make that noise as kind of an alert to their other flock mates like they're a little unsure. But I don't see anything. I think we're safe. How about, can we try to call the kitty? Do you want to call the kitty? <laughs> oh, there we go. That was adorable. I don't know why they would want to call it Kitty. No, I don't think adorable. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, they also can sing some songs. You guys want to see if they want to sing it all for us? Yeah. yeah? All right. Oh, you're excited. I love that. Yes. Can you girls sing in Spanish? Oh, my God. I have a lot. Do you want to keep going? No? Alright. <laughs> this is the coolest one I've ever heard. <laughs> okay, do you girls want to sing in Spanish? You are my son,
<laughs> to be fair, there probably are cats on the farm. Yes. You never know. Can you say hello? Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you. All right, ladies. Do you want to sing in Spanish? They sound like a lot of fun as they're cheering on stage, but they can be some of the most challenging pets that you could ever have in the home. Uh, a parrot like this, they could have many different challenges that you might experience. And, hey, Scott. Hey, check, check. Got the new wire. We're good to go. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I was just telling them that parrots like that could be some of the most challenging pets for a lot of different reasons, right? They could bite really hard. That's true. Uh, they can also scream really loud, right? You probably saw some of that. Right. And they could live to be 50 or even 60 years old, too. Yeah, and you know, most parrots never even learn to say a word, so they're pretty incredible what they do up here. That's totally true. But I usually do the parrot now, so... <laughs> Don't worry. You know me, I like to plan things, so I already worked on a new plant, right? So I have something special for you guys. You guys want to meet one of the biggest birds in the show? Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Check him out. This is Ozzy. Oh, great, great idea. Okay, this is Ozzy. He's an Andean condor. And he's one of the largest members of the vulture family, right, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Check out the 10-foot wingspan. That's what helps to make him the largest member of the vulture family. And vultures are important because of what they eat, which, of course, is what? Dead things, exactly. Now, a vulture like him will come along and clean up the mess. Now, that stops the spread of disease. Right, so in a way, you could call these guys nature's recyclers. And if we all did just a little bit more recycling all in our own way, incredibly gracefully, the earth would be a much cleaner place. But my favorite thing that this guy does is when he runs on the ground. It's super cute. Check it out. <laughs> Ozzy the Indian Condor. <laughs> Okay, so Ozzy is a really big bird, and obviously, you know, Molly and Gabby are on the smaller side, but it kind of goes the different shapes, sizes, even colors for beautiful birds like that. Look at that guy way up there. He's a crowned crane. His name is Frazier. Yeah, Frazier Crane. Oh. You're still telling that joke. Some people are laughing, but, you know, this guy never flies down to me, so I need you to calm him down to you if you don't mind. I'm going to step back here. Scott, Scott, you've been working with him like all week, though. Well, I've been working with him, but he's never flown down. No, but yeah. yesterday was like real close. Yeah, he was close, but he doesn't fly down, so I think it's better if you just step in right there. Good. Adam, I'm telling what you. What do you think? Should Scott give it a try? Yeah! Yeah! Right? Okay, come on. Okay, I'll give it a shot. It's going to happen today. Today's the day. Today's the day. All right. See what happened? Okay, uh, you know what? I've got another idea. Crown cranes, you see, they get their name from the crest of golden feathers up on top of their head. And they stand up just like that all the time because they're shaped like a corkscrew. And I think he just needs to feel a little more at home with you. So I made you something. It's right behind the rock right there. The right. Yeah, I think this is really going to help you to create a connection. <laughs> this? <laughs> yep. I'm not wearing caps. Why not? I, I just don't want to. I made it for you. What, what do you think? You should put it on, right? Yeah! Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Guy Fieri. <laughs> all, all jokes aside, now you have your crown, he has his, right? And then you've got some treats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is where all that practice pays off. Right here. <laughs> it works! Hey, you think it was the hat? No. Yeah. So why am I wearing it? It looks really great on you. It's your color. <laughs> Thanks. It's probably more of these treats would be my guess, right? Right. And it's all those training sessions you spent with this guy. You know, repetitions to help build confidence. Right, Scotty? Very true. Thanks for flying down, Frazier. <laughs> Guys, that was Frazier Crane. <laughs> you did it. Oh, man. That was a lot of fun. I mean, this, seriously. And, and honestly, this whole show has been a blast for me. And 
To be honest, you guys have been a wonderful audience too, right? Right. And you know, we have something special for all of them still. Right, this is, this is one of my favorite birds. Yeah, it's the grand finale. So let's start it off with a symbol of pride for the United States of America, the bald eagle. Thank you. Everyone, this is Hope. And not too long ago, bald eagles, just like her, were placed on the endangered species list. Their numbers dropped so big, so quickly, people really didn't think they'd be around for future generations to see these birds out there in the wild. But that is when something amazing happened. Because people took notice and they took action. You see, they started cleaning up the waterways where bald eagles fished, and they stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which is one of the major reasons for their decline. Right, so people like all of us, we made a big difference for these birds just by taking care of the environment and we brought them back from the brink of extinction. Very well said. And everyone's efforts paid off. See, the numbers of bald eagles started to climb and they rose so high, they were taken off the endangered species list. That is a really powerful conservation success story. But more importantly, it goes to show the power that all of us have, each and every one of us here, to help take care of animals just like hope. And we can all do it in our own way, out in their environment. Right, that's well said, Scott. It, it's a great conservation success story, and there are so many just like that one. But there are also a lot of animals that still really need our help out in the wild, too. That's very true. Take, for instance, the blue-throated macaws, uh, like this guy here. His name is Rudy. And these birds are some of the rarest species of macaws in the world. They're found in Bolivia, but there are less than 200 of these guys left in the wild. But it's not all bad news, though. We've been working very closely with a group called the World Parrot Trust. They want to reestablish the wild population of these beautiful birds by releasing more out to join up with their wild counterparts. So then one day, we might be able to see skies filled with blue-throated macaws. Okay, now this would be an incredible sight to see, right? And there are so many other birds with unique stories too, like this guy, or even a Topo Toucan, like the one up there. No matter what it is, go out in nature and appreciate the things that you'll find. You might create new stories along the way or find an animal that you love. On behalf of all the animal behavior specialists here, and of course all of our feathered friends, we wish to leave you with this. May your hearts take flight, and your spirits soar forever.